Welcome back. May is nationally recognized as Mental Health Awareness Month, and here in the triad, the inaugural Black Mental Health Summit will be held this Friday. An event has now sold out, but we are still speaking with some of its panelists throughout this week here on the local vibe because these are very important messages to share. These are important topics, and we'd like to welcome Tiffany Hall and Carmen Haskins talking about the topic of trauma regarding this subject. Both ladies are licensed clinical social workers. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you for having us. You're very welcome. So Carmen, we will begin with you. If you could please share different types of trauma and the importance of treating it. Yes. So these are not limited to, but they can include for children, bullying, um, different types of abuse, witnessing domestic violence, displacement, either through like house fires, natural disasters, or being removed from the home because of abuse or neglect, and then estrangement for like coming out or um, various uh, sexual or social orientation, gender orientation um, issues. And if untreated, that can lead to several issues throughout life, um, issues with regulating reactions to emotions, issues interacting with other people, feeling isolated, um, issues na navigating various parts of life um, and challenges. And it can also lead to suicide attempts or death by suicide. On that note, Tiffany, we've been seeing that the number of deaths by suicide, it's increasing nationally. What sort of trends are you seeing here in North Carolina? Yeah, here in North Carolina, suicide is the 13th leading cause of death over um, all age groups. And we know that suicide in our state is the third leading cause of death for those ages 10 to 24 years old. Um, and there's not one factor that contributes to suicide, but multiple factors. And as Carmen stated, you know, trauma is one of those factors that can lead to suicide attempts or death by suicide. Wow, really staggering numbers there. Carmen, we turn to you now to consider, you know, when someone is on their healing journey, what sort of coping skills and help do you both offer these individuals in your line of work? Yes, um, so focusing on, you know, self-care, things that people can do in their own time to help build their um, social and, and mental, physical health, building that support system, um, leaning on friends, also connecting with professionals um, or people in the community that you trust, whether that's church leaders, a professional counselor, chaplain, um, and just finding different ways to build up those healthy coping skills, ways to deal with stress as they arise. Now, Tiffany, we're speaking with you both again ahead of this Mental Health Black Summit that's happening later this week. Why would you say it's important to focus your work in these kinds of black communities? Yeah, so that number I gave you earlier about suicide being um, the third leading cause of death for North Carolina citizens age 10 to 24, Within that number, we know that suicide is the leading cause of death for black females and males within that age group. And what the research has shown, what counselors are hearing is that one in 10 black youth have attempted suicide within the past year and nearly two in 10 um, have made a suicide plan. So we need to get the services and information out there because family members, friends, teachers, um, those are the folks that see these individuals who are struggling before they get to someone like me or Carmen. Um, you bring them to us because you've noticed something is going on or they have a diagnosis, but we need people to be aware of what these warning signs are and what the issues are so that people can get help sooner. Wow. Well, thank you so much for the work that you do, ladies in our community and to help raise awareness on this topic, especially this month. Thank you for your time.